Uh, ready? So are we pretending that you're behind the camera? Yeah, so we'll just, I'll talk to that one, that's it. And then I will actually get behind the camera so then you don't oh. feel so weird. Okay. <laughs> I'm just introducing you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, hey folks, we're kind of hanging out in the back of the ute in um, Raymond Park, which is Kangaroo Point in Brisbane. We've got Ruby here and Al, and they are, I think they're founders or they're creators of Growing Forward, which is a community-based gardening project, but they are going to tell us more about this. Um, and yeah, it's a bit busy at the moment because the gab is full, so we will do our best to, to get the information across. Uh, slightly a bit different today because I'm going to be behind the camera so I'm going to leave you with these two lovely ladies and rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, thank you for joining me in the back of the ute. That's okay. Um, thank we... you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah, you're in control of the mic. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, how you came about with this whole project. Um, yeah, so basically um, Growing Forward, the initiative started at the beginning of COVID. So uh, me and Ruby and a couple of other friends were just worried about how um, the global pan pandemic was going to have an impact on local food security. Um, so we just came together and we're like, how can we, um, you know, how can we give mutual aid to our community? And then we saw in our um, local community that, that there was just like an abandoned block of land. Um, and Ruby has um, experience in permaculture, I love gardening and so we're just like why don't we just start a community garden um, and that's what we did and we set up a gorilla garden. We didn't ask permission from the state but rather um, traditional owners instead um, and yeah we set up our first garden and we got so much support from it. Um, the community really loved it and from then um, we've actually set up more gardens. So we've got a network now so there's four. So this is the Kangaroo Point one, we've got one in Dunham Park um, Krilpa, which is West End, um, and also Blimber as well, and there's going to be more to come. Um, and yeah, and did you want to add anything? Okay, cool. <laughs> so was it difficult to set it up to start with? Uh, we had a few challenges. So um, the first, initially when we were setting it up, there was quite a big, um, a, a big planning process that happened. So um, at first we flyed all of the local area, we spent about a week and a half gathering all of the materials that we needed and then we created like a 50 page um, document of like a prototype of how you how you set up a, um, a gorilla garden and like a whole resource kind of kit for people who may be interested in doing something similar um, so setting it up was like quite a big process we had weekly meetings online um, because the pandemic had just hit um, and now um, what we've found is that things have been rolling a lot easier. So it's, it's a lot smoother to set up a garden um, now that the foundations are kind of all laid out. People can kind of just go and figure out what it is that they want to do, um, read some of the resources and then replicate um, the, the initial kind of project. So, so you kind of created that template then? Yeah. And can it be used outside of Brisbane? It doesn't... Have Absolutely. To be yeah, and there have been, there's been groups, so... There's groups that are doing something kind of similar that um, doesn't involve gorilla gardening, but involves backyard gardening. So Farm It Forward in the Blue Mountains um, set up kind of something very similar where they go into the backyards of um, folks in the Blue Mountains and they use their unused lawn space and create local produce that's given to the community or purchased by the community. And it creates employment for young people um, and also kind of a connection between the aging population and some of the younger people that are moving out, out of um, the Blue Mountains because there's no job. So there's a few other similar projects that exist um, and that have started up. Uh, that one started up prior to Growing Forward and there's another one in Canberra that started up since Growing Forward. So, so the, the name Gorilla Gardening, is, did yeah. you make that up or was that...? No, it's been around for a long time, okay, yeah. That's the first time I've heard of it. Uh, yeah, so Gorilla Gardening's existed, um, it, it's a form of resistance, so it's, it's occupying space that's unused, that should belong to the community, but has since, you know, kind of like there's all of these... Um, policies and red tape that prevent the community from actually accessing the land and using the land to their benefit. So um, kind of what going forward aimed to do was to go um, into plots that had been largely abandoned or kind of just not really used by the government um, or by the local community because there's no access to it and to just kind of like 
break all of the barriers, um, socially at least. Mm. Um, and we've found that, so we've, we've got four gardens and not one of them has been demolished, even though all of them are illegal. Um, so it's been a, a year and a half or almost two years for the oldest garden. Um, and every part of it is illegal and not one person has been charged and not one, one garden has been knocked down, which is cool. So you say that it's illegal because that's, that's the trouble, isn't it? It's mm. a really fine line between protecting each other, mm. your mental health and society mm. and actually abiding by a law that doesn't really work mm. for the benefit of us. So do you think then in time that law will change or will it just sit here in sort of this empty space? How do you think it will go? What's your plan? Um, I think the plan is to create a culture of resistance. So part of going, the vision of going forward is about resisting against laws that are meant to be broken or, or laws that don't actually serve the people. So um, trying to kind of create a culture where people go, actually, People who can't access food deserve free food. And it's crazy that we live under a system of capitalism where, where people who don't have money don't have access to health, to housing, to food. Um, and that's something that we want to challenge. And, and part of um, kind of like our belief system is that resistance is, is a really important part of, of breaking that system. And so we're hoping that um, we can create pockets of community resistance, pockets of local um, relationship-based resistance, um, kind of matching the needs of people to the things that they're fighting for. So we should be able to fight for our, our housing, we should be able to uh, fight for our food, and we should be able to fight for the housing and food of other people. And um, yeah, I think, I think a big part of what um, the garden teaches people is that every plant is connected to another living organism every insect is connected to what's around it and it's it, it they all have a place in in the ecology of that living system and so when we understand our connections we understand that we need each part we need the flowers we need the bees we need the compost and the rotting you know nitrogen we need all of those different parts in order to survive and what the system does is it teaches us that we don't need any of those parts that actually we just need our individual self and our individual family unit um, and that we're not connected and so part of the resistance is reminding ourselves that we are connected and that we have a, an obligation to kind of fight for, for our connection to to each other to what's around us and to the housing and food of other people so that leads now on to mycelium, the short film. Mm. Did, were you approached by Jono? Had you met him by then? Because it was his idea, wasn't it? Um, well, originally, so originally, so we set up the first garden at Karupa. Um, and then Johnny found out about this project and then he approached us being like, hey, I'm really interested in what you guys are doing. I think it's really good, like community building and community resilience. Um, so Jonathan Shree approached us, was like, would you like to be part of a documentary that will um, explore, you know, um, community resilience through, you know, um, community gardens and all that kind of stuff. So that's when we got approached for it. That's great. I didn't yeah. realise it was that way around. So um, when you were asked, Oh, so we'll, sorry, just explain a bit more about Mycelium Film, well, what is it about, because there'll be people that haven't watched it, and I really recommend that people do, I've watched it four times now, and every time I see something new, so what, what is it? Um, so yeah, it's a short film, and um, it's won quite a lot of awards, so um, um, the docker makers are Christine and Nathan, they did an amazing job, and it's basically just about urban farms, and how do we build community resi resilience through, you know, making community gardens and providing like seedlings and connecting people to seedlings and gardens and giving that harvest away for free, so it's about like building um, community resilience through that, um, so yeah, if people get a chance to watch that, I definitely recommend, so yeah. yeah. Have you noticed with the gardens that you have built that your community is becoming stronger? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, at the beginning of COVID, a lot of people felt um, that there was like a lot of... <laughs> Am I just like... It's great being in a city. <laughs> it's okay. <gasps>
you know, have their nine to five jobs and they feel quite isolated from the community. And whenever I'm like gardening down there, people always come up and they talk to me and they always ask like, oh, this is so great. Like, how can I get involved? And a lot of people from like the local community have been involved. Um, and we also set up like heaps of like working beads like every single week. Um, but I think like the gardens are not just like, it's not just about gardens, it's a bit more like intersectional in that, in the fact that, you know, this garden here was set up as a um, solidarity garden for the refugees. So about um, a, six months ago, there were some refugees that were locked in a hotel just over there that we, that lots of the people in the garden were also involved in protesting for the freedom of refugees. So we set this garden up here in the hopes that, you know, those refugees, once they're released, they can come and be kind of part of our community and garden with us. Um, and since then, um, some of the guys have been released and they feel obviously like really isolated from the community and they come to the garden and they say to, us, say to us, thank you so much, like I used to garden back home and I haven't gardened for eight years and this is like being really nice. So it's, yeah, it's kind of bringing people into the community. Um, and we also, with all the harvests that we um, make, all that produce goes, um, we give that away completely free. Um, to different orgs, like it goes to Multicultural Australia, which um, is for refugee families. Um, we have connections to some of the guys, refugees who's been released, so we package boxes up, we give it away to them. Um, and it also goes to a social space, which is a place in Maruka, um, where they make food from our produce, then give the food away um, for free. Um, and so, yeah, and the garden at Krilpa also has been um, a bit of a community like bridge between um, the people who live next door. Um, so the apartments next door are at threat of a development coming in to demolish um, affordable housing and the developers want to um, replace that with like luxury apartment that's like going to be built for the rich. So obviously those people are going to be displaced and in the process the garden will be destroyed as well. Um, so we built it like a bit of a, you know, um, solidarity with those people who have will be um, displaced um, and we've been like protesting against that development um, with them so yeah it's kind of built community together from like lots of different angles I suppose. Did you want to add anything? Okay, cool. What would you like to see in the future? How should we move forward now? Because obviously we've reached a point in history where we are not going to go back to how it was. So. What do you, as, a, as the younger generation, want to see and are going to be more involved in and you believe is actually going to come to the forefront in the whole of society, whether it's food, because our food system's wrecked, for starters, our health system's wrecked, <laughs> our education, everything is, is broken. Yeah. So, yeah, how... Do you, do you see a really good future happening here? If with, uh -huh. I do, with you guys at the <laughs> helm, that would be great. <laughs> do you want to answer? Yeah, I can answer. Um, I think for me, it starts with trying to resist against our organising system, which is capitalism. So I think unless we're challenging the pillars of that organising system, so the pillars are things like um, the idea that somebody else can profit from owning someone else's home. You know, um, the idea that um, somebody can own land and extract and exploit that land and get rich from it while the community around that, that plot of land suffers. Um, the idea that a few people can get really, really wealthy and the rest of us, you know, um, yeah, the, the majority of people suffer. You know, the majority of people in um, different parts of the world live and will live um, extremely um, kind of horrific consequences because of because of this organizing system which is capitalism and I think kind of what's happened is we're in a stage where people accept capitalism as though it is reality as though there's no other possibility there's no other organizing system um, by which we can organize our society and I think First Nations people um, prove that wrong you know they prove that this land is being cared for um, in, in such a deep way for thousands and thousands of years and in such a short period of time our, our colonial organizing systems have managed to completely undermine all of that work and and destroy so much so I think a big part of going forward is community resistance but also it's about getting really serious in thinking about how we organize, 
How do we organise as a community to resist? How do we organise different ways to live in this living system that we're in? Um, and so, yeah, I think the thing that gives me hope is the idea that if we get organised in time, perhaps we can start to save different pockets or perhaps we can start to regenerate different areas and remind people of the, the thing that actually brings us together um, rather than all of the things that, that divide us and, and pull us apart, um, which, yeah, I think is quite evident at, at late stage capitalism where we are now. It's, yeah. Do you have anything to add? No, I think you summed it pretty well. Come on, Al, just add a thing. <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh, I don't know, that sums up pretty well. I don't know, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think we just need to try and commit, create new ways of living, you know, that's like anti-capital, anti... You know, we just live in a world where it's just so normalised, where we just put profit over everything. And we're seeing, we're seeing the um, devastations from that. Um, so we just need to work hard now, try and resist, and in resisting, like, creating those communities that, you know, that will survive. Yeah, yeah supporting each other. It's going to be a big part of this, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yep. Yeah. So more community gardens for sure and giving that food away for free to people who need it. Yeah. yeah. I think I think also um, food is really important because it's such a basic reminder of what, what we're immediately connected to and it's something that every single person needs to live. And so it's a really good starting point. It's a really good entry point of going, hey, every single person needs this thing. Yeah. And it's really unfair that some people don't have access to good food and other people do. And how can we change that? And I think it's kind of like the seed. It can be one, one of many seeds um, of, of change, of really significant change that's actually much bigger and much bigger than this small little community garden yeah. um, or many community gardens placed all over this continent. I think it, it's, yeah, it's something small that connects people um, and it can actually expand to, to become a, a thing that challenges an entire system, hopefully. A living organism, almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, you guys, for yeah. coming out this time to Thank be you. in the back of the ute with me. <laughs> much appreciated and keep That's up it. with a really good work and Farming Revolution, if you ever need a chance or anything. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thanks, guys. That's all right. Cool. Hopefully the noise will be okay. It wasn't too bad. It's, it is. Because you got the mic so close, I think it will be okay. Yeah, I tried okay. to put it closer. But, like, if, if we had a big mic. Yeah. Know. Oh, it would have been. Yeah.